Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is Pre-AP Chemistry Week 28. We're in a new unit, Unit 13, Thermochemistry. It's going to be getting hot in here with some thermochemistry. We're going to be taking a look at exothermic and endothermic reactions, the difference between heat and enthalpy, and potential energy diagrams, and last but not least, calorimetry. So let's take a look at Week 28. An exothermic reaction is a reaction that ultimately releases heat ultimately releases heat. It has a delta H, which is called an enthalpy, that is going to be negative, which means it's going to be giving, ultimately giving off heat. You can see here we have a system. This system has a delta H, which is going to be negative. It's going to, re, it's going to be releasing heat, and that heat is going to go out into the surroundings, and that surroundings is going to be endothermic or absorb heat. So when you see a change in temperature that goes up, that change in temperature goes up, that means the surroundings is absorbing heat, which means the system itself is exothermic or the system is releasing heat. It's got a delta H, which is negative, which means an endothermic reaction is the exact opposite. When the change in the temperature goes down, uh, it's, it's ultimately getting quote unquote colder uh, we don't use that term hot and cold. We're going to be really taking a look at uh, what's happening with the system and the surroundings. So when the change in temperature is going down, that means the surroundings is releasing heat. And where is this surroundings releasing heat to is the system. The system is absorbing that heat. The system is becoming positive in its delta H. It's absorbing heat here. And we call that an endothermic reaction. Well, that's, that brings us to the difference between heat and enthalpy. Heat is this measurement Q, and heat is in units of joules. Heat is basically energy, energy, okay? Whereas enthalpy is in different units. Enthalpy is in joules per mole or kilojoules per mole, which means it is a ratio. It's a ratio of how much energy per one mole. How much energy per one mole? This is the best example I can give you. The best model I can give you for this is gasoline. Gasoline has an enthalpy of negative 1400 kilojoules per mole, which means if you burn ethanol, if you burn this gasoline, it's going to give off 1400 kilojoules, 1400 kilojoules of heat for every one mole, which means if you have a small amount of moles, you're going to have, and you burn this, this amount of moles, you're only going to get a little bit of heat. But if you burn a lot of moles, like a gas station, you're going to get a lot of heat. But the enthalpy is the same because it's the same substance. It's the same ratio. It's always negative 1400 kilojoules per mole. But if you have a small number of moles, you have a small Q, a small heat. A large number of moles, a large Q, a large heat. Again, it's a proportion. It's a ratio. But gasoline is gasoline is gasoline is gasoline. It has the same enthalpy because enthalpy is the ratio of how much heat for every one mole. Okay, so that's the difference between heat and enthalpy. So let's take a look at what we call potential energy diagrams. So here we have a plus B is going to react to bring you C and D. And in order to make this reaction happen, we need to break the bonds of A and B. So here are our reactants right here. And you can see we need to put in 60 kilojoules of heat, 60 kilojoules of heat to break bonds. Breaking bonds, breaking bonds, a chemical reaction, breaking bonds is always positive. You have to put in positive energy to break bonds. You have to put in energy to break bonds. And up here, you can see your reactants are a bunch of uh, just, just particles that have been, all the bonds are broken, and we call that the activated complex. The activated complex. This energy that goes into breaking all the bonds we call that activation energy, activation energy. So this, this energy to go up, oh, that's an awful line right there, isn't it? Uh, the energy to go up is called my activation energy. That's the energy needed to 
make my reaction happen to break all my bonds. It needs 60 kilojoules of heat to break all the bonds. And that brings us up to the activated complex. And then the energy of your products, you can see here, we're gonna give off 80 kilojoules of heat when we're forming bonds. So forming bonds is all always negative. Forming bonds is always negative. And that's gonna give off heat. So what is the delta H? What is the delta H? The delta H is the difference between here and here. We call that the enthalpy. And the enthalpy is negative 20 kilojoules, isn't it? Negative 20 kilojoules per every one mole. And you can see it took positive 60, negative 80. Who won out? The negative won out. So this was an exothermic, this was an exothermic potential energy diagram, okay? So the potential energy of the reactants is 40 kilojoules. The potential energy of the products is 20 kilojoules, which means the enthalpy, you can see the enthalpy is the potential energy of your products minus the potential energy of the reactants. The potential energy of the products was 20 minus the reactants was 40. That leaves us with negative 20 kilojoules per mole is your delta H right there. Or it's the difference between here and here, the beginning and the end. And you can see that is an exothermic diagram. Let's take a look at an endothermic diagram. You can see this endothermic diagram. Here's my reactants. My potential energy of my reactants is 50. So remember your delta H equals the potential energy of your products minus the potential energy of your reactants, which means minus 50 kilojoules right here. You can see we're ending at 100 kilojoules which means what's 100 minus 50? That's positive 50 kilojoules per mole. That's the enthalpy, isn't it? Because we take products minus reactants. So take a look at how much energy, the, active, the activation energy, the activation energy, how much energy did it take to break all the bonds? Positive 200 kilojoules. Up here is called my activated complex, my activated complex. How much energy to, did it give off to form my bonds? Well, it went from 250 down to 100. That's negative 150 kilojoules. So positive 200 going in, negative 150 going out, which means your enthalpy, your enthalpy is this difference here. Your enthalpy is equal to positive 50 kilojoules per mole, and that is an endothermic reaction because the reaction ultimately absorbed more heat than it released there. Absorbed more heat than it released. Uh, last but not least is a thing called calorimetry. Calorimetry. Calorimetry uses the equation Q equals MC change in T. What does the Q mean? Q is heat. What does the mass mean? The mass. What does M mean? The M is the mass. What is the delta T is the change in temperature. Delta T is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And the C is called your specific heat. Your specific heat. That's how much heat is going to be absorbed or released when, uh, for every one degree Celsius and for every one gram. We have our grams divided by molar mass gives you moles. We have our delta H equals, of course, our Q, our heat. Heat is Q divided by moles. So we're in joules per mole or kilojoules per mole. Okay. So let me give you an example of a calorimetry problem. So you can see here, here I have 100 grams of water. I have 100 grams of water. And water is initially at 25 degrees Celsius. So this water is initially at 25 degrees Celsius. We put in 2.22 grams of calcium chloride and it starts to dissolve. And as it dissolves, the temperature, the final temperature ends up becoming 28.8 degrees Celsius, as it says right there. Which means, do you see the surroundings, quote unquote the water, is going up in temperature, which means it's absorbing heat which means the system must be releasing heat. The system down here, the calcium chloride, is releasing heat, which means this is an exothermic reaction here. It's releasing heat. So what we wanna do in calorimetry problems is we wanna look at each thing a little bit separately. So first let's find the Q, the heat of the water, because that's what we're measuring the temperature of is the water. So we take the mass of water, which is 100 grams, 
The specific heat of water, now the specific heat of water will always be given to you. That's 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. That means water takes, it, it, it is going to absorb, need 4.18 joules to take one gram of water to go up one degree Celsius. It's actually a pretty high number, okay? And let's take a look at our change in temperature. What was our change in temperature? It was 28.8 minus 25. I believe that's 3.8 degrees Celsius, isn't it? 3.8 degrees Celsius. So 28.8 minus 25 is 3.8 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to multiply all those things together, and that will tell me the Q, the heat that the water absorbed, was positive 1588.4 joules of heat. Okay, So that means the water absorbed this much heat. If I move that decimal place three places, that means it absorbed 1.59, and I'm going to round kilojoules of heat. So the water absorbed 1.59 kilojoules of heat, which means that the calcium chloride gave off, the Q of the calcium chloride gave off 1.59 kilojoules of heat. There's a conservation of energy. The water absorbed the calcium chloride gave off, okay? So that, that suffices for the Q for my enthalpy, but I still need to know the moles. So I'm gonna take 2.22 grams of calcium chloride. I'm gonna divide by calcium chloride's molar mass, okay? Calcium chloride's molar mass is approximately 111, 111 grams per mole, okay? And I found that on my periodic table. So 2.22 divided by 111, ends up giving me 0 0.02 moles of calcium chloride. So if I want to know the enthalpy of the calcium chloride, remember the calcium chloride gave off 1.59 kilojoules, that's my Q, divided by 0 0.02 moles of calcium chloride, that's how many moles I used, so 1.59 divided by 0 0.02 ends up giving me negative 79.5 kilojoules per mole. And that is the enthalpy of calcium chloride, okay? And that is, that's always going to be the enthalpy of calcium chloride. Remember, if I use more calcium chloride, it would give off more heat and the temperature of the water would go up more. But the ratio of 79.5 for every one mole is always going to stay the same for calcium chloride, okay? And so that is a thing called calorimetry. That's an experimental way to find your delta H. Again, that's an experimental way to find your delta H. And you really want to do that by looking at the water first. Then you move that into the substance, the system. And you're going to find, of course, the water is going to tell you how much heat. And you can know the moles of the system. And then you can divide the heat by the moles. And that, of course, is a great week, week 28 for thermochemistry. Again, if it's too hot, get out of the kitchen, okay, and get into the chemistry lab. I'll see you guys in class, guys. Bye.